What about Dame? What does Dame do? We, we're hearing the, the, the talk already. He's on a request. What do you I want to ask you guys this. What do you think the Knicks would have to give up to get Dame? Everything. The whole, the guard in itself. So you're going to, so I mean, <laughs> how do you win a championship? How do you win a championship if you give up everything? They'd have, they'd, they'd have to, they'd have to, to give up RJ, uh, Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, three first round picks and backstage passes to the dip set versus yeah. the locks versus battle. <laughs> nah, I don't. I, so it depends on if, if Dame says it's only New York, if Dame says it's I'm on, I only want New York, then it's a similar situation when AD left New Orleans, where the Lakers had to give up a boatload to get him because he wasn't going to go anywhere else. Um, if, if Dame just says, Hey, I'm interested in New York. I think you probably would have to start the conversation with RJ OB and at least at least three first round picks and possibly two pick swaps yeah. it would have to be something like that now the reason i mentioned Kawhi is because if, if you get real if you get real tricky right if leon rose knows for a fact let's say and, and we know these players talk all the time behind the scenes let's say dame says to, to his agent look Kawhi is willing to go to new york if i can get there now it's just on the knicks to figure it out then if you're the knicks at that point you include Julius Randle in a deal yeah. to get off the the twenty plus million dollars that he's owed this year. Get they Dame. still have seventy uh, in cap room too. Yeah, but I, I think the the problem is so if you trade for Dame and you still have Julius, Dame makes forty million. So yeah. those two guys, along with Mitchell Robinson going into the last year of his deal, it, you're not going to have the cap space to get Kawhi out right at that point. If you flip Julius Randle in a deal for Dame Lillard. One, it, it would have to be with the with the assumption that somebody else is coming with Dame. So therefore you trade for Dame and then you sign Kawhi outright. Yeah. I mean, listen, it could work. I, my, Combo, you got a confused look on your face, man. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm listening <laughs> to you guys here, man. This is I think this no, is I, like I said, I again I, I but it, it, it all depends on if, if that's what Dame says. If Dame if Dame says I know I can get another guy with me, then you try to flip Randall because Realistically, is Randall a max guy? Is Randall a max contract guy? And Dame, well, through the regular season, he seemed to be one. No, yeah, but, but we're we not looking to give yeah. max contracts to guys through the regular season. Yeah, and that's not a championship. I think so. I, I think we've seen players that aren't as good as Randall get maxes before, right? Can yeah, you win a championship, win championship though? Championships, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> that Dame and, and Julius Randall is not beating the Bucks, not beating the Sixers, not beating the Nets. So then why am I, why am I doing this? Why so you're I, saying you, you guys are basically saying they should build for their future. No, I'm saying, no. I'm saying that if you're going to get Dane, right. Then the next part of that question is, all right, so what's our core for the next three to four years? Cause Dame is signed for four years. So now yeah. what becomes our core? If our core is Julius Randle, Dame Lillard, and a bunch of shooters and young guys, that core at best may be a second round team. And if you're is there any is is there is there any segment of the Knicks fan base that doesn't want to trade for Dame? Yeah, there's some. Oh, I've, I've heard okay. some people. Okay. I've heard some people say just continue to stay young and continue to develop. And I understand. Yeah, because I, I and I think that's only. Be, I don't think that's the right move. I would get Dame if you can, but I think that's a lot of that is because they've paid aging players in the past. You know, correct. Yeah. It's from the history. Yeah. And and the Knicks have been through this before. You know, you gave up the house to get to get mellow, and no championship Did we really came out of that. But you know what I mean? They gave up. Did they we gave really up, give up the house, uh, like damn near the whole. Well, what we thought was gonna be at, at that point, but you know, a lot of those guys, you know, maybe didn't didn't pan out. But it didn't get the Knicks to a championship. And you know, after you gave, he was already locked in with Amari, and then his knees went bad at, after about a year and a half of him being with the Knicks. So. Uh, if you're the Knicks, do you really want to deal with that again? If because you're gonna to have to give up a lot to get Dame. Well, if you're the Knicks, you give up a lot of that. You here's the alternative, right? So that I think this summer is crucial for the Knicks because Julius Randle's on the last year of his deal. He's gonna want a new contract after the season. Right? You got RJ Barrett after this season going into his fourth year, he's gonna have a drastic pay upgrade. They gotta figure out what they're gonna do with Mitchell Robinson. And so this cap space that we have now isn't going to look as appealing going into next summer, especially if you got to give Julius Randle the max. Now you don't have the same leverage. The second part of that conversation, 
two years ago, I was excited about all the draft picks the Knicks had, <coughs> but because they exceeded expectations this year, those draft picks don't look as great anymore. We're not sitting with a lottery pick again this year. Yeah. We also don't know what we have in Obi Toppin now, right? RJ Barrett is a solid player, but is RJ Barrett realistically a franchise player? Maybe not. He's probably better suited as your, as your third option on the team. So I don't think the future looks as bright anymore for the Knicks unless they take advantage of their current state, which is we have a bunch of cap space and we have a bunch of picks that we got to flip right now. Because in the NBA, you only got 12 guys on the roster. So to continue, the Knicks got three draft picks this year in the first round. All three of them draft picks are not going to be on the team next year. Two of those guys will probably be draft and stash guys or G League guys that we try to develop. So how does that help us next year? How does that help us moving forward? The Knicks, I think, have to strike now while they're hot, while people are actually paying attention to what Tibbs did with that team. Don't wait an extra year when you can't get a marquee guy and then now I'm forced to give Randall $40 million. But that's probably what, then for those people who say we don't want Dame, because unless unless you're bringing in Dame with another st- superstar, you're pretty much back to square one. Right. And and like I said, I understand that point of view. I think, if like Combo said, if Dame wants New York, you go get him, point blank. Where's the best fit okay. for Dame, though, Combo? Where, where would you like to see him? Go back home, man. Go to the Warriors. Him and Steph. I mean, do they need more shooting? Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Talk.